fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. Faithful Indian companion Tonto, the masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness, have come down to us through the generations, and nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver, run the trail of outlaws. And Silver! The tiny western town of Split Rock was a huddle of less than 15 small shacks along one dusty street. The two men on the porch of the general store didn't even take their spurred boots off the rail when a young rider galloped in from the hills to the west. I reckon that's young Ted Jenkins coming back to Split Rock. Fan in the dust, too. Young Sprout's in a hurry. Yeah, he's always in a hurry. Yeah, full of boyish enthusiasm. Bubbling over with pep and ginger. Uh, he'll grow up. Whoa, boy, whoa there. Whoa, whoa, boy, whoa. Uh, howdy. Howdy, Mr. Doby. Howdy, Mr. Shane. Howdy. Sure is a hot day, isn't it? It's hot, all right, Tad. But it's going to be a whole lot hotter when your ma finds you. For you were supposed to be gone just overnight. Instead, you've been gone three whole days. You're going to catch it. Oh, shucks, ma won't mind. Say, you know where I was? Yeah, telegraph line, I'll bet. Who told you? Oh, son, ever since the town of Split Rock learned there was stringing one of them newfangled things past the Madre Range, that's all you ever talk about. Oh. Mean to say you went 70 miles out of your way just to see that useless gadget? Oh, it's not useless, Mr. Doby. It's a wonder of the ages. Oh. Why, it is, too. Just think, a little ordinary wire, no thicker than a cactus needle, and they send messages on it. Messages all the way from San Francisco to New York. That is, they will when they string the line the rest of the way. And what good is it? Just a lot of foolish nonsense. Well, I wish they'd strung the line through Split Rock instead of 70 miles away. Now, look at here, young Jenkins. What's the difference? We get news plenty fast enough already. Why bother having it come a day faster? Days faster, Mr. Doby. It travels like lightning. Uh, days faster, then. I never cared for lightning anyways. Split Rock can get along right enough without it. Oh, but Mr. Rush, Doby... Rush, rush, rush. Ah, it's a nuisance, that's what it is. Oh, you wouldn't say that if the town of Split Rock ever needed help in a hurry. Oh, oh. get help from a little spindling wire like that? Oh. Split Rock's done all right so far, and it'll keep on doing all right. I'm just as glad it didn't come through this town. Aren't you, Shane? Uh, sure. Well, anyway, I went over to see it. They got it strung over the top of the range already. Must be 20 miles past the summit. Just a long row of poles stretching out of sight with one wire running from pole to pole as far as your eyes can see. Well, you got any other news, boy? Your mama said you went to Crawford. Oh, yes, sir, I did. Nothing much, just the usual. Uh, speak up. Just the usual. Trouble with you is your mind's full of nothing but that telegraph. Oh, yes, sir. The folks in Crawford said there's rumors about a band of Geronimo's engines wandering around somewhere. Yeah? Apaches, eh? They won't never bother us. Oh, I don't reckon so, Mr. Doby. There's nothing they'd want in Split Rock. Yeah. <laughs> 
Shows how little you know about your own hometown. This time next week, there'll be 50,000 sitting right in my office. 50,000 gold. Gold? Well, I didn't know that myself, Doby. Yep. Those prospectors up in Bitter Creek have been scraping it up for three months. That's their total. Well, it's mighty interesting. Hope those Apache Indians don't hear about it. Uh, they won't. And outlaws either. We can handle any of them. Oh, say, speaking of outlaws, that's another rumor I heard over in Crawford. Some rancher out that way saw two of them. Oh, that's so? How do you know they was outlaws? Do you know them by sight? Oh, no, sir. They were strangers to him. But he happened to see the one of them wore a black mask over his eyes. I guess only an outlaw would do that. Yeah. He said they had a pair of the best horses he ever saw, even from a distance. One of them was a paint, and the other was the biggest white stallion and the fastest horse. What's the matter, Mr. Shane? Something wrong? Uh, yeah. No, no. Uh, just recollect something I gotta do. Adios, youngster. Hope your ma don't give you licking. Adios, Dobie. Adios, Shane. <laughs> Oh, get up there. Yes, real nice fella, Willard Shane. Minds his own business. You ought to be more like him, son. Be better for you. Yes, sir. Shane's got a good horse, too. I always admire a gent who can judge horse flesh. Yes, sir. But this white stallion the rancher was talking Don't about... Don't go on your hide. You're always thinking that anything in Split Rock can't be as good as something someplace else. Telegraph, horses, every... Mr. Doby, I'm beginning to worry about my son, Ted. He... Well, land of living. Oh, Ma. Tad Jenkins. Now, Ma, I just want a little bit out of the way. Don't you now, Ma, me, young man. If your father was alive, he'd take care of you proper, and maybe I will myself. Now, you get along. I'm going to talk to you after supper. <laughs> They're coming up ahead. Slow up, Tuttle. Steady, steady, oh, Silver. Oh, 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 the man we're looking for may be here. Maybe. We look pretty long time. It's a sleepy little village. Uh, this town of Split Rock. Isn't the sort of place a man like Slego would pick out, is it? No. Still, you never know. Only way to make sure is to ask. Uh, there, light and window. I'll wait for you here, Tonto. You go ahead and see what you can learn. Uh, you wear a mask. They think you outlaw, maybe. Time to go. Come back soon. Get him up, Scout. Shucks, I'm almost a grown man. I didn't wander far off. I just had to see the telegraph. Oh, you're just like your father used to be, Ted. I reckon it's no use blaming you. Oh, it won't happen again, Ma. I promise... Stop right there, Tad Jenkins. No promises. Huh? You'll only be making a promise you won't be able to keep. But after this... Yes, sir. Let me know beforehand, will you? Yes, sir. Ah, oh, gee, Ma, you're swell. You... What is it, Ted? I hear something. What? A horse. Come into the cabin. Now, be careful, Ma. <laughs> Land sakes, Ted, you're a caution. Just because you heard some stories about Indians and outlaws, you think... You can't be too careful. Oh, now, nothing ever happens in Split Rock. Go on, answer it. Yes, sir. Yeah, what do you... An engine. An engine? Uh, you not be afraid. Me friend. Me come in peace. What, what do you want here? Me look for a man named Slagle. You know him? Why, there, there's no man by that name in Split Rock. Oh, uh, him, bad outlaw. Mask friends say to That's find That's enough. Him. So you got the gall to come here and ask right out for an outlaw, huh? I reckon you're one of them bad Indians. Oh, you make big mistake. Put gun down upon you. You're the one that's making a mistake. But Ted, all he asked And he was... got his answer. There's no Slagle here and there never was. Is that your horse outside, Engine? Uh huh. Then straddle him, Prado, and vamoose out of here. Oh, uh, you not... Ted, careful, he's wearing guns. Oh, uh, me not use gun. Adios. We make camp out in range. Maybe you learn about man named Slagle, you tell us, huh? Get going, Injun. Uh, oh, Scout, oh, fella. Uh, get him up, Scout. Ted, did you ever think you might be in the wrong? He didn't do any harm. Well, supposing he was an Apache. Oh, he looked like a right friendly Injun. There! He... I knew it! Huh? Did you see that? That Injun was riding a paint, and he met another rider back a ways. The second man had a white horse. Ted! The story you heard in Crawford. Yeah, Ma, about the two outlaws. That was them. That's why the other man didn't come to the door himself. Because of his mask. We'd have known right away he was an outlaw. Here, take the gun, Ma. But Ted, where are you going? To tell Mr. Doby to get a posse after those hombres right this minute. What's that, Ted? 
Is this a straight story? Straight as a telegraph wire, Mr. Doby. They left our place heading north. How long ago? Ten minutes. Kino, Tad. I reckon you wouldn't fool about something like this. No, sir. Well, get on your horse. <coughs> yes, sir. We'll rouse Shane and Parsons and all the men we can muster. We'll be on their trail before they get a mile further along. Just as well you didn't try to get the boy's gun, Tonto. His mother might have been hurt. Ah, uh, he leave quick, like him say. In a small town like that, he'd know everyone. Uh, you asked about Slagle? Ah, uh, him say no Slagle in Split Rock. Mother say that, too. There's no reason to doubt them. Looks like we've followed a tumbleweed trail, Tonto. Uh, we waste time. That Slagle is somewhere in this section. I'm almost positive. Mm -hmm. Maybe so. He was seen with the telegraph crew. You know, that was a week ago. He might still be around. Mm, telegraph? Not close to Split Rock. Then we'd better try the Madre Range. Uh, mountain plenty big. It'd take long time. Well, our job is to smoke him out. We've got to find him, Tonto. He's dangerous. Uh, that right. Take us three or four weeks to cover the mountain slope, but we'll... Tonto, uh, horses. Uh, that right. Tonto, hear him too. They come this way. Kimotabi, that posse. Why them come after us? I don't know, Tonto. We've no quarrel with anyone. All right, Mr. Doby. That boy in cabin. They think we're outlaws. And what we do? No time to argue with them, Tonto. It's dark and they're nervous. They'll shoot first and talk later. But Kimotabi... Never mind. Wait. It's a mistake on their part. But this is no time to tell them, so gallop, Tonto. We'll leave them far behind. Get them up. Come on, Silver. already. They let out of here like antelope. Well, we're rid of them. They won't come back to Split Rock after this. I uh, reckon not. I wish we could have caught them. Yeah. It's too bad Mr. Shane wasn't along with us. He's got a real fast horse. He might have done some good. You no, know, I doubt if his horse could have kept up with those two. It's mighty strange all the same. What is, Mr. Doby? Shane said nothing to me about taking a trip or anything. And yet he wasn't at his place when the posse called for him. Wonder where he went so sudden. Listen to me and listen close. As soon as it got dark, I saddled my horse and rode out of Split Rock. I hustled right over here. What's the matter? Did the honest Mr. Willard Shane rob a bank? <laughs> no, I didn't rob a bank. That's not as humorous as you think, Kinlaw. Because next week there will be something worth robbing in Split Rock. 50,000 in gold. 50,000? Yes, Kinlaw. Well, that's fine and dandy. A little sleepy town like that. Will there be any soldiers around? No soldiers. <laughs> you hear that, gents? Yeah, yeah. Well, we got enough guns to wipe that town out easy. We'll do it. We'll get that gold dust next week, won't we, boys? Yeah, yeah. Hold on, hold on. There's one thing more. I rode out here in a hurry to tell you it won't be so easy. Why not? Kinlaw, did you ever hear of uh, the Lone Ranger? The Lone Ranger? Lone Ranger? What's he got to do with this shebang? I don't know, but he's been seen between Split Rock and Caldwell. Him and his engine partner. Do the people in Split Rock know who he is? No, they don't, but you can't... But nothing. That's all I want to know. They think he's an outlaw, huh? Yes. Kino. And we attack the town. We got enough guns to take care of everything, including the Lone Ranger. Good, Kino. That's what I've been waiting to hear you say. Wipe him out, including the Lone Ranger. <laughs> The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
continue our story. A whole week passed without a sign of trouble. True to his word, the Lone Ranger had stayed near Split Rock, camped in the hills. But young Tad Jenkins never came out looking for him. I've got a feeling something's wrong, Tonto. We're going to spend the rest of the night circling around, scouting this section. I thought I saw some riders in the hills. They looked as if they were trying to conceal themselves. Ah, uh, stars fade out now. Dawn come pretty soon. Yes. Perhaps I was wrong. Perhaps... Uh... Kimasabi, what that? Coming this way. Don't move, Tonto. Plenty horse, plenty rider. Why them ride at night? Quiet, Tonto. That's what we're going to find out. We'll hit the town right at dawn. Take them by surprise, Sammy. They won't have a chance. Uh, what do you mean? Who not have chance? Figure it out, Tonto. Those men mean to attack the town. Huh? What else could it be? A dawn attack. I don't know why, but there it is. Uh, what we do? We'll head for town right now. We'll go in shooting our guns. Uh, it's the only way to rouse the town. Then at least they'll be awake when the outlaws strike. Come on, follow me. Get him up, Scout. Come on, Silver. Ted. Ted, wake up. Ma, what's wrong? What's the shooting for? I don't know, Ted. It's still dark outside. It's not even daybreak yet. It's right down the street. Sounds like trouble. Let me get my boots on. I'll go see. So will I, son. You better be careful, Ma. Well, the whole town will be out there. Must be something important. This is no time to be careful. Well, then hurry up. Whatever it is, we don't want to miss it. Hurry up, Ma. That's I Mr. Doby, Ma. Don't believe a word of it. We're beginning to get a little lighter. Listen, Ma. What I say is true. You've got your guns, you may have to use them. There's an outlaw band coming down from the Madras. They'll attack this town any minute. He's low. Who are they, Ted? Can you make them out? I don't know exactly, Ma. There's a paint horse and a, a white horse, but it's the masked man. Hey, what's that? Who's that talking? It's me, Mr. Doby, Tad Jenkins. That hombre and the white horse is this masked outlaw. And the others is Injun Park. Sakes alive, they must be after the gold. Now, hold on, all of you. Tonto and I were after this gold. Would we ride in here shooting off our guns? Well, of we course we wouldn't. Besides, we're not outlaws. We're working for the law, not against it. I'm telling you there's going to be an attack on this town any minute. Don't stand around. Get ready for it. Unless you what are we waiting them? for? These men are outlaws. Let's put them in shape. Yeah, 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 yeah. Who said that? Him and the Injun both got guns, Ma. I reckon it wouldn't be easy to do any shooting, no. Who said that? Think you'd answer. Lurking in the crowd, weren't you? Getting lighter all the time, and I've got you spotted, Mr. Tonto. Uh-uh. Tonto see him good. Come out here, or we'll get you ourselves. Stay away from me. Stay away from me. Don't move, Slager. Let go of me. Let go of me. Let... Now, what's all this? You're making a mistake, mister. That man's name is Shane, not Slagle. No outlaw can come Take in and tell us. Get away from your guns. Tonto, make sure no one makes a move. Oh, uh, Tonto, make sure. He's holding six shooters. Now, Mr. Doby, you seem to be the leader here, if there is one. I say this man is an outlaw named Slagle. He's been using the name Shane to hide out in your town. If you want proof, read this. And I don't listen to him. Well, don't, don't go in my hide. This here's a poster asking for the arrest of an outlaw named Slagle. And the picture proves that you're him. Do you deny it? Well, I, uh, Look at his uh, face, Doby. Uh, yeah, mister. He can't deny it. We'll put him in jail already. Shucks. Look there. What in thunder? It's an attack. This masked hombre must be right. Everything he says is so. Come and get him. Come and get him, Kinlaw. Now's your chance. That's where you're wrong, Slagle. These men are ready and they've got guns. All right, Doby, Jenkins, Tonto, everyone. Take cover in the houses and hold them off. Use your guns. <laughs> Warned ahead of time of the Lone Ranger, the men of Split Rock were ready when the attack came. They poured a withering fire back at the outlaws, circling the little town. All day long, they held them off. But toward dusk, when the shooting slackened, the defenders, clustered in Dobie's store, got worried. We've done all right so far, but what's going to happen when the darkness comes? They got twice as many men as we have. It's just a question of time, mister. Even with you and the Indian, we haven't got a chance. They'll wear us down sooner or later. All right, plenty bad. Well, we mustn't give up. All they're after is the 50,000 gold dust. Let them take that and release Shane. Um, I mean, Slagle from the calaboose, and they'll ride off. You can hold out a little while longer. Oh, but what's the use, masked man? It'd be different if we was on a regular road. There'd be some people passing by that'd hear the shooting and ride for help. Yes, yeah, Split Rock is just a lonesome little town. Ain't more than once a month anybody comes near us, mister. Gosh, it's too bad the telegraph don't come into town. We could call for help that way. Ah, telegraph. Wait a minute, hold on. What's that, Ted? Well, all I said yes, was... Yes, I know. What made you think of it? Is there a telegraph line anywhere near here? Near nothing. It's 50 miles. 50 miles? Is that all? Might as well be 200. Just a second, Dobie. 
100 miles, huh? What do you think, Otto? Uh, maybe so. There's an army post 100 miles from here. If they could send a if, force... If, if, Gee, horse of that mister, it's no use. Why, it'd take two days to reach that army post and two days more to get back. We can't hold out that long. It won't be necessary to go all the way. Huh? Doby, you man, listen to me. You gathered everyone into this one building. You can hold out better, can't you? I reckon so, mister. A little longer. Then do it. Do it at once. Tonto will help you. Ah, uh, and Kimo Sabi, what you do? I'm leaving, Tonto. <laughs> Swiftly, the townspeople were called to the building. The gray shadows of deepening twilight concealed them as they moved behind the shacks. Fifteen minutes later, Tonto slipped out of the door. He moved along the wall where the Lone Ranger watched. Kimosabe. Yes, Tonto. Everyone inside. Uh, Good. Silver. Here, boy. Steady, boy. Kimosabe. You ride Silver through outlaws. It's the only way. Silver's fast and it's getting darker by the minute. You take plenty chance. Maybe you stop bullet. Yeah, it's the only way, Tonto. Get back in the house. It's up to you, Kimosabe. Don't let them give up. Uh, Tonto, try. You come back soon, huh? As soon as I can. Stay big fella. Ready, Silver. Adios. Adios, Kimosabe. Adios, Tonto. Ready, boy? Ready, Silver. Now! <laughs> Engine. Uh, him go. He ain't reached him yet. <laughs> and he'll never get through. Never. You say that again. Tom. Easy, easy, Engine. You hold your lips, Schlegel. You'll get a gag in addition to them ropes if you don't. I wonder what the masked man's plan is. I don't know, Tad. Maybe he's going for help. Or Shoot! Maybe... Stop. Did he... Did he make it? Come on, big fella. Uh, him make it. Him get through. You listen. Speeding like a bullet, Silver left the outlaws far behind. Soon the Lone Ranger was riding in the clear, racing across the shadowed prairie. Fifty miles to the Madre Mountains. Quit those legs, Silver. Cover the ground. Like a white flame whipped by the wind, Silver sped on his way. The moon rose, and under the pale stars, the tall man leaned forward in the saddle, his black mask close to the flying mane of the great stallion, his voice urging Silver on. That's it, big fella. There's no horse like you in the West. We're heading up the slopes now, Silver. Faster, Silver, faster. Up the long slopes toward the lifting hills, on through the night. Until finally at a cut between two glistening snow-capped peaks. The telegraph line, steady, steady, Silver. Oh, my knife. Climb the pole and cut the wire. With Silver on guard below, the Lone Ranger climbed the telegraph pole. A knife gleamed in the night as he cut the wire. There. I'm wearing gloves. The spark won't be retarded. Touching the wires together, I can send a message. Somebody's bound to hear it. Split Rock needs help. The Army's got to send help. <laughs> the Army's got to send help. Almost morning, Tano. You reckon we can hold out? Mask friends say fight. We fight. Oh, there's too many of them. Don't be fools. Give up. Give us a gold and I'll see you don't get hung. Looks hopeless with the masked man gone. Yeah, he's gone. Gone and left you in a lurch. He deserted you. <laughs> That's where you're wrong, Slagle. Mister, you're back. Hey, Masabi, Tonto, glad to see you. You bring help. I came back alone, Tonto. But help may be coming. Just hold help out and keep... Help may be coming? May? What do you mean? Well, we can't be sure, Mrs. Jenkins. We sent a message. If the message got through, the army will come here. If the message didn't get through, then... Yeah, mister. Then? And I'm afraid we're lost, Ted. But at least we'll go down fighting. Grab your rifle! Here they come again! <laughs> the attack was beaten off. So was the second attack, and the third, and the following night, three more. Without the lone range, the defenders would have given up long before, but his flaming spirit sustained their courage. Don't give up. Keep fighting. Get mighty low ammunition, mister. Make every shot count, but keep on fighting. Don't give up. So the fighting went on. Two nights later, just at dusk, the outlaws attacked again. Doby, sighting through a boarded-up window, pressed his trigger. Bullets. I need some more bullets. That's all the ammunition there is. Watch that. We're we'll clean out of bullets. Ah, uh, that's right. This time we're not stopping. Yes, Tonto. They're coming closer. 
Jones. Well, we put up a good fight. Listen, At least... mister, am I hearing things? It's a bugle, that's what, a bugle. Yes, Ted, it's the army. We're safe. The army at last. Listen to them. Those outlaws haven't got a chance. <laughs> The Lone Ranger was right. The army column swept down on the outlaws. In a few minutes, they were prisoners. And 15 minutes later, the army captain was inside the store talking to Doby and the others. I reckon we got here just in time, Mr. Doby. Are you sure, dear captain? I never heard so welcome a sound as that army bugle. We got them all, and we'll take Slagle along also. Was it you that sent the message to us by telegraph? Uh, uh, eh? Telegraph? Hey, Captain, is that how they did it? Yes, son. Uh, didn't you know? You mean a masked man rode out and cut the wire and sent a message that way? That's it. Well, well I'll be doggone. Ted, I take back all I said about the telegraph. It's a wonderful invention. Well, it saved our lives. Yes, sir. But, say, I wonder who that masked man is. The masked man is gone? Yes, sir, Captain. Him and the engine rode away as soon as the shooting was over. Didn't even wait for thanks. He never does, son. He never... Hey, uh, Captain, from the way you speak, you know who that man is, don't you? I certainly do, Mr. Doby. That must have been the Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger? Hey, gosh, did you hear that, Ma? We, we met the Lone Ranger himself. Gosh. The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.